Welcome to Night Hacking at the Javaland Conference. My name is Stephen Chin. I'm the Java Community Manager. I've been touring across Germany via motorcycle with Sebastian Dashner, and we're doing jug visits and live interviews and um, all sorts of cool stuff. And I'm here with Bert Jan Shriver. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thanks, Steve. And we're going to chat a little bit about how to decode the air around you with Java and $7 hardware. Definitely. Is the hardware actually seven dollars? Yes, see it's it's uh, just a, um, a common USB digital TV stick you can pick yeah. up in in in, uh, in China for like seven uh, seven bucks. And what this does is you can use BT plus DAB plus FM. Yeah, nice. so just a digital TV stick you use to um, pick up digital TV from the air. And what's what's um, different about these sticks is that since they're very cheap. Lots yeah. of the processing is done on, on a software side. Uh, oh, okay. So by using specific software, you can make it do other interesting kinds of processing. Cool, cool. And you, you, I assume you, you're a software guy. You have something yes. you've cooked together. I've got some stuff to show. <laughs> All right, so why don't we just switch straight to your desktop and, All right. and get right to this, because I think you have, you have some cool stuff um, to show off here. So, um, uh, software defined radio is all about radio signals and receiving and decoding radio signals. And one, one radio signal we are very um, uh, known with is uh, it's radio, analog radio. VDL. So, uh, you can tune into an analog mehr. radio station and just Mit listen Steffi Klaus. and see if you pick up correctly. Einen schönen guten Tag wünsche ich Ihnen. Yes, Als mein nice, Sohn auf nice die weiterführende Schule gekommen ist, da hat er sich am meisten so, darauf gefreut, endlich auch mal von Männern unterrichtet zu werden und nicht nur von Lehrerinnen. Uh, Eine Lehrer hat er gerade, und zwar radio. in Sport. Alle anderen Fächer stream, fest so in... Let me stop it. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. So, uh, you can um, connect it to your um, RTL SDR stick, and then you just tune into a frequency, and you see uh, on your display the, the radio waves you're, you're listening uh, to. So, this is just plain radio. But there's other interest, interesting stuff in the air around us, so let's see if we can pick up some other signals. I happen to know that there's something interesting around 530 megahertz, so let's tune into that. So we're hearing some static now. We can see that there's a peak in the signal here, so let's see what we can find there. There's another one coming. So if we tune into this, we should be able to hear something. In einem guten, in einer Firma arbeitet, wo ihr euch um technische Schulden kümmern dürft um, und am Anfang eine gute Archivierung. So we, what we hear there was the um, wireless signal from a microphone, some of the speakers uh, upstairs oh. here. So they're all just transmitting uh, raw audio data over the air. As long as you know the frequency and you got some basic hardware to receive it, you can receive it, decode it, and listen to it. So probably you could even tune into these guys. If I knew the frequency, yes, I, I could. Think, yeah. I think you, well, normally it prints the frequency on here, but yeah. yeah. But then yeah. we would just end up hearing ourselves and wouldn't be really Yeah, it's actually useful, a 740, right? oh, yeah. 776 yeah, yeah. yeah. range. <laughs> so we can definitely hack into these. Yeah, we can. That's, that's pretty cool. So what's the Java part of it? What are you using for Java? Yeah, of course, this is just uh, fun to listen to stuff, but there's also different stuff in, in the air, uh, which are, are digital signals. And digital signals, you can listen to them, but then we just hear, hear static. Um, so when I started looking into this, I noticed that there were several um, interesting things you can pick up. For example, uh, signals from uh, commercial airplanes. Yeah. They have um, transponders called ADSB. And they send out their position, their heading, their altitude for uh, collision avoidance um, scenarios. So that, that's like a digital, a digital format for yeah, that information. Yeah, yeah, So the, the specification is open. You can just look it up on the internet, and there are some tools available to uh, to decode them. Cool. So what I did is is um, put a Raspberry Pi at my home, uh, connect one of these sticks uh, to them, uh, put some software on it, and tune it into the frequency of plane transponders. So. Uh, we should be able to see which planes are flying uh, over my house at the moment. <laughs> so this is uh, Google Maps, and the little house here is uh, about where I live. It's near Utrecht in the center of the Netherlands. So you're, you're logged into a device running from your home? Yeah, so there's a small there's a Raspberry Pi in my home, which has a basic antenna connected to it, uh, which receives and decodes the plane signals, and then sends it to a small web app, puts it in a database, and it visualizes here. Cool. So um, what we can see here is, is planes uh, approaching and um, um, leaving from Amsterdam Airport. 
Um, we see now that the traffic from the last 50 minutes, but we can tune it up a bit and, and say let's get the uh, air traffic from the last 60 minutes or maybe the last two hours. And uh, we can see that there was quite a lot of uh, flight movement going, uh, going around my house at the moment. Yeah. Uh, which I can also see when I look up in the air, or I can also see when I go to uh, Plane Finder or Flight Radar 24, but of course, it's a lot more fun getting it out of the air yourself. So, so that's one thing, uh, planes. I also happen to live quite near the um, Amsterdam Rijnkanaal, which is a big channel with lots of commercial uh, ships going, uh, going there. Uh, and so I did you can watch like shipping, yeah. shipping lanes. Yeah, so, so I did kind of the same for ships. Uh, can set it to ship mode. There's another antenna connected to my machine. Um, which is receiving uh, AIS traffic, which is basically the same as ADS-B, but then for ships. So it's also yeah. for monitoring collision avoidance. And uh, I'm plugging that here. The range is a lot less uh, because ships typically, uh, when a ship uh, knows it's going to collide like a kilometer in advance, it's yeah. enough time to, you know, to um, derive its course. But when two airplanes know they're going to collide in a kilometer at once, probably a disaster waiting to happen. So here we see ships uh, in the last 120 minutes. Let's go back a bit. This is the ships that, that passed by my house in the last uh, 15 minutes. So you can see there's, there's quite a lot of traffic uh, going on there, and here's a few passing yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When we uh, tune so it up a bit. You live in a busy area. Yeah, there are you lots got of there, there's airplanes, a, ships. Definitely. There's actually, you see a few ships docked here. I would say parked, but when ships you say docked. They're here in the harbor and waiting, and this one turned around there, apparently. So it's real so fun what you can do with just a few bucks of hardware and some software. Yeah, so this is this is cool, but but aren't you aren't you like a spy? Aren't you going to get all arrested? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, all of this data I'm visualizing here is 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 uh, for up for grabs for free on the internet. So when, when I click on one of the ships, yeah. it links to uh, one of the sites that already uh, put this 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 data open up on the internet. The same goes for plane data, uh, you know, uh, on a flight radar and planefinder.net. Um, when it when it comes to fetching signals from the air, you you could maybe also receive police radio. Uh, that might be less legal to do. I believe most of these things that are in the air, you're you're all right uh, with receiving them, but you're not allowed to act on the data okay, you get you from can. the signals. Yeah. Can't act on the data. What what does that mean to act on the data? Well, say you're a reporter, uh, yeah. and you would go listen to the police radio and hear there's a big fire going on and speed there to make so some you, nice so pictures. You're allowed to have the data or see the data, but you're not allowed to take any actions based on knowing the data. Yeah, exactly. As far as, as, far as my knowledge goes, I'm not a lawyer, but yes, yeah. that's how it works. Okay. That's interesting. How about transmitting on those frequencies? That's probably not a good idea. Uh, no, probably not. Uh, you'll need different hardware, but you can pick, hard, pick up hardware for transmitting for like 20 bucks or so. Um, when you would be transmitting um, ADS-B signals from your house, uh, probably you would have the police uh, knocking on your door pretty quick. Okay. You would need, for yeah. most transmissions, you would need a license. So there are some bands you can send on uh, without license, used for walkie-talkies or baby monitors. Yeah, yeah. So like even these wireless transmitters, you have to get different channels based yeah. on which country you're in or which vicinity yeah. you're in, because they have license bands which differ by definitely by yes. region. Okay. No, that's that's interesting. And I guess I guess jamming signals that's probably a big no no. That's transmitting too. So yeah, just transmitting yeah. garbage. Transmitting garbage. All right, so that's that's cool. It's an exciting project that demonstrates what you can actually do with some of this some of this hardware. Actually a lot of people have Raspberry Pis so they could set up something like what you have at home to yeah. to monitor ships and other things passing by. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, so where would they? What, what are you up to next? Have you given your session yet? My session uh, is tomorrow at four. Okay, so folks can watch your session tomorrow to find out more details. And then, is there like a good website or my GitHub uh, account? There's all the details account. on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people can go there for the code. Have you published any of the code for this stuff yet? It's all online. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So thanks a lot, Bert. Appreciate the interview here at Java Land, and that's that's exciting. You can go decode some of your, your co-speakers' talks and make, I them, will. make them jealous of you. <laughs> thanks, Steve. All right, thanks. Okay.